absolutely addicted to sleeping with my blow dryer. I don't want anybody telling me that I can't use it. The blow dryer had just attacked me that night. When I see scars on her arms, that's a problem. People will tell me all the time, I don't have to feel. I don't want it to rule me anymore. I love eating toilet paper. You should really consider not doing it at all. It's not normal. You're really playing Russian roulette with your life. My name's Lori. I'm 31 years old. I live in Austin, Texas. I am a mother to a beautiful little three-year-old named Andrea. We're gonna make your hair so pretty today. And I am addicted to sleeping with my blow dryer. I was eight years old when the first time I remember sleeping with the blow dryer. Um, I used to share a bed with my older sister, Tawny, and she, one night, turned on this blow dryer. And the sound of it, the warmth of it, just instantly put me to sleep. And from that night forward, I was hooked. Typically, my nightly routine would just be to get up underneath my covers, turn on my blow dryer on low, and um, just curl up next to it, feel it on my hands. If I'm cold, I put it on my feet, and then I zone into the sound of it. Very often, people who are addicted, whether it's to alcohol, to drugs, or to behaviors, they often do it to soothe themselves. I had a really, really bad burn incident where I had like six or seven major, major blisters. And I woke up and it was just like, the blow dryer had just attacked me that night. When I see scars on her arms and scars on her chest and whatnot, that's a problem. Sharing the bed with the blow dryer, I hated it. You know, I'd wake up in the middle of the night and she's knocked out and I'm up tossing and turning. Either you come over to my side of the bed where I'm cuddling with my blow dryer, or else, you know, we won't cuddle at all. I took some video of her when she was pregnant. I caught her right in the act, sleeping with it. People witness what I've had to learn to live with. Witness someone that sleeps with a blow dryer. She's like a blow dryer expert. I mean, she looks at the wattage, the volts. I really like to be able to adjust the heat setting at night. This one doesn't even have a cool button, so this is a no-go. When we were sharing a room, she, she definitely had to have it. During the middle of the night, she'll come in and she'll curl up on my blow dryer side most of the time. As long as I'm using it, she's gonna be partial to it. It's not something I want for my daughter. My name is Keisha. I'm 34 years old and I live right outside Chicago. And I love eating toilet paper. I started eating toilet paper probably in the sixth grade. At the time, I went to go move with my grandmother and my auntie. Leaving my mom and my brother and sister, it could have been stressful enough or be traumatizing enough for me to start a new habit. This is a time in most normal development. Girls are needing to find an identity, at the same time needing to have someone to go back to for nurturing. So a disruption in that, you would imagine, could be very emotional. Every time you sing Keisha, she would have tissue in her hand and she would try to hide it behind her back. And if you tried to take it from her, she'd get upset. I've never been able to understand why she eat tissue. And I never will. I think I crave it because I love the way 
The toilet paper feels on my tongue, how it dissolves when it hits my tongue. My favorite is this one. And the reason why is because it's two ply and it's easier to digest than some of the two ply toilet paper. And I would just separate the ply and then pull it and eat it. Eating toilet tissue is not normal, Keisha. Do you know that you've been eating toilet tissue for 23 years? You never thought about it? No. Only when you say something like okay, that about it. Okay, when you think it. about it, it has to have some kind of effect. Taking in any foreign substance that is porous, that is fibrous, um, can build up in the stomach. And if it doesn't digest, it can cause bowel obstruction. And that can be potentially fatal. I carry it with me in my purse. When I'm in my car, I keep a roll in my glove compartment box, and I'll just grab the toilet paper and break it off and start eating it. A good place where people really don't pay attention to you eating toilet paper is the movie theaters. It's dark in there, so you can like sneak a couple of sheets in with no one even noticing. If I eat too much toilet paper, I'll have like stomach cramps. Um, I'll have a hard time going to the bathroom. All we can do is just pray that, you know, you stop eating the tissue. She doesn't understand that I've tried and I can't stop. I'm worried about you. Mom's worried about you. There's no escape in toilet paper. I gotta have it. It is mutilating your body and could potentially kill you. Yeah, it's very, very scary. I'm addicted to eating toilet paper. Like any addiction, you can't stop. I eat it every day, morning, noon, night. Today, I'm here at the coffee shop to meet my sister, Jennifer. She's trying to convince me to stop eating toilet paper, so I'll see how it goes. When was the first time you ever started eating tissue anyway? Um, I really don't remember. What made you want to eat it? I really don't know. <laughs> My sister sometimes jokes with me, and then sometimes she can get really serious when she's vocalizing how she feels about me eating toilet paper. Why are you trying to look to see if somebody's looking? And then you kill me. You eat like it's bubble gum. Want some? No. Hmm. Try it. I don't think syrup and tissue go together. Keisha said as long as she's not hurting anyone, that is fine. I just think that she should really take it serious because who eats tissue? That can clog your system up. No, it can't. Yes, it can. I'm, it's not like I'm balling it up and just stuffing it in my mouth. I'm taking like pieces. But don't you think those pieces add up? It dissolves and breaks down. How you know that? It dissolves and breaks down in septic tanks and stuff like that, not your body. You never know. It may kick in when you pour it. You're like, what the hell is going on with my body? They're going to say all that damn tissue ate. Oh, wow. Yeah. I'm worried about you. Mom's worried about you. The kid's worried about you. I know it's going to be hard for you to just stop, but you should really consider not doing it at all. I really do want to stop, but it's I, I don't know how, I guess. That's why you got to Just think help. about it. With addictions, like drug addictions, when they stop doing the drug, they get away from the drug. There's no escape in toilet paper. It's an addiction, and I think she can fight it. I'm willing to support her in whatever it is that she does, but this tissue eating, it has to stop. The blow dryer 
has become a part of who I am. I am very addicted to the heat and the sound. So it's been 24 years now, I'm still sleeping with the blow dryer. My girlfriends, Micah and Erica, are not crazy about the blow dryer. They worry about the dangers. I've watched you be addicted to the blow dryer. And you have to understand why it really bothers me. I don't have sisters, you're my sister. And to watch you go through something that is mutilating your body and could potentially kill you. Yeah, it's very, very scary. Lori's had burns over the years. That's the part that bothers me so much about the whole blow dryer thing is because it, it is hurting her physically. It is an addiction, I mean, even though it seems kind of silly to us in the outside world, it's something that you have had to have for so long. Yeah. It, it is an addiction and needs to be taken seriously. Why, why is it that you have this addiction? I don't know. I don't know. What is it that comforts you and what do you need that for? And maybe how can you? There's a lot of things involved. Calm yourself and sleep it's, soundly it's and It's psychological, safely. it's physical, it's mental. When I do think about the long-term effects of it, you know, that does concern me. I don't want to be 65 or 70 and still whipping out my blow dryer at night. It is weird. You really deserve to be free of any kind of addiction. Mm -hmm. you know, and you you're too to, you beautiful really... to have things like this. Right. <laughs> you're just, you're too beautiful to be burned and Thanks. scarred. I'm just ready to like break free of this addiction, this strange behavior. I don't want any more burns. I don't want any more fire hazards. I don't want Dre to grow up with it. I'm really happy that you're seeing it for what it is. That it is a weird addiction, and it is an addiction period. Okay, so what's gonna happen from here? Are you going through some type of counseling or something to help you? I'm gonna go check it out, see what they tell me, see what I can find out. Whatever is determined, we are gonna be here for you mm -hmm. to make sure that it's not gonna be an issue anymore because we know that you really do want to quit and that's the first step. For Lori, I hope that with all of this, she can see what has caused this addiction and not only can she stop using the blow jar, but she can really see what is at the root of this addiction. It does sound like it has addictive qualities to it. It's just part of me. I, I don't wanna go without it. You know, one of the classic symptoms of addiction is denial and minimization. I don't think it's a problem. I don't think really? anything can happen. I am addicted to sleeping with my blow dryer. When I think about quitting the blow dryer, it's a very uncomfortable feeling. I'm here at the therapist's office. I'm excited, I'm curious. I'm a little apprehensive. Hi. Hi. Come on in. So tell me what brings you here to talk to me today. I have been battling a different kind of behavior. Um, I, I sleep with my blow dryer on at night next to me, and it helps me go to sleep, and that's kind of why I'm here to talk to you. I, I am a little selfish with my blow dryer. I don't want anybody telling me that I can't use it. It's just part of me. I, I don't want to go without it. When you're talking about this, it does sound like it has addictive qualities to it. I think any addict that I've ever, or alcoholic that I've ever asked, um, why do you use? You know, what, what do you get from it? People will tell me all the time, I don't f have to feel. There is a numbing that does happen when I turn it on mm -hmm. because I kind of zone everything out. So um, tell me, if you were to think about not using your blow dryer to sleep, what kind of feelings come up for you? Uneasy, uneasy, uncomfortable, a little anxious. Anytime we've used something to cope with life as a tool to escape, the thought of giving it up is like giving, like cutting off our right hand or our right arm, you know, it's, it's, it is unnerving. You now I've tried to quit before, but I don't know that I ever really gave it 100%. Do so. you think you're at the point in your life where you want to give it 100%? Yeah, I don't want it to control me anymore. I love eating toilet paper. You're not supposed to eat toilet paper. You're supposed to eat food, but I eat toilet paper as well. Today I'm here to see Dr. Dennis, the psychiatrist, so she can 
give me a little insight about me eating toilet paper. I still don't think that there's anything wrong with it. How long have you been eating toilet paper? Um, for as long as I can remember, um, like 23 years, probably and longer. How old are you now? I'm 34. I don't think it's a problem. I don't think really? anything can happen. You know, one of the classic symptoms of addiction is denial and minimization. Mm -hmm. You tell yourself, it's no big deal. I've been doing it for 24 years. I can handle it. If your intestines rupture inside of your abdomen, that could be fatal and could be fatal pretty quickly. You know, as a medical professional, I can tell you that, that you're putting your body at risk and really playing Russian roulette with your life. My mom says, my inside is gonna bust, so I guess that's what she means. Is there any warning before that happens? Not a whole lot. Oh. Not a whole lot. Okay. What do you, what do you think about that? That's scary. It, I mean, it definitely gives me something to think about. Can you imagine your life without it? Without toilet paper? Yeah. No, because it's always going to be there. You know, for people who are alcoholics, we, when they leave residential treatment and uh -huh. we send them home, we recommend that there be no alcohol in the house. But you can't do that with toilet paper because... Yes, you can. What are you going to use? Um, there are other uh, sanitary wipes besides toilet paper. Uh -huh diaper wipes. You know, there are ways to have your house be toilet paper free. When I was talking with Keisha, it seemed as if there was a, a wall up between us that she was not willing to let down. That's not uncommon the first time a patient meets a doctor. You're picking up a gun that has one bullet in it in many chambers and pulling the trigger. Right. You feel fine when you pull the trigger and a bullet doesn't come out. And one day, when I pull it, I might just not be so lucky. It makes me sad. It's a lot of tissue that I've been eating for like so long. I hope that I can really break free of my addiction. I can't be 70 years old and still sleeping with my blow dryer. I have admitted I have a problem, and now it's just about taking steps to overcome it. So often, you know, we're crazy busy, and we're stressed out, and we go, we're going at 90 miles an hour, and then, you know, we brush our teeth and lay down, and we expect to go to sleep. Right. You know? You can't just shut off. I'd like to see you learn some of this deep breathing okay. techniques. Yeah. And, mm -hmm. So that your brain starts slowing down, and, and you start relaxing. And you know, I'm all about meditation and yes. prayer. Meditation might be a good one for me, being able to put myself in a very peaceful state, to be able to kind of slip right into sleep without feeling a need to drown out outside noises or a need to feel heat or, um, you know, things like that. One thing that's been really beneficial for some of my clients is to write a goodbye letter to their addiction. You're gonna talk to your addiction about all the things it's done for you why you loved it so much, but then you're also gonna really talk about why you need to let it go now. Lori is out of denial, which is a major first step into getting into the road of recovery. By overcoming her addiction to this, this gives her knowledge that she's strong to do other things in her life, and that can be really empowering. Eating toilet paper for 23 years, I. I'm assuming that you could have health problems from doing it. When I try to stop, I continue to do it. I wake up and still do it the next day. People who have, um, who have a predisposition to addiction and who are caught in the grips of it can't stop on their own, even if they really, really want to. You're dependent on this behavior. I'll try to cut back some more. I think therapy would be really important, both individually and in group with other people who are struggling to let go of compulsive behaviors. I'm willing to look into it, and I want to stop too, and I think I'll try mm -hmm. to stop. I'll put forth the effort. At some point. Maybe tomorrow.
makes me sad. This a lot of tissue that I've been eating for like so long. I didn't really realize how much it was. My next step is gonna be stop eating tissue altogether. It don't hurt to try, I'll try. It's always nice to have people proud of you for taking steps towards, you know, something positive and in the right direction. The first step is admitting you have a problem and I'm going to take steps to conquer it. Dear Blow Dryer Addiction, Although we have been together for many, many years now, I'm ready to let you go. You have hurt me, scarred me, and caused me pain. For that, I am ready to let you go. Okay, come on. I will not allow you to control me any longer, blister my skin, or draw me into you. I will not remain a prisoner in my bed or in my life any longer. Farewell addiction, dependency, and blow dryer. You will be remembered.